Chamomile tea tastes like dirt. Chamomile. Chamomile tastes like dirt. <laughs> Make sure you stay to the end of this video in case you want to see us go on a little mini adventure. We go cut down a Christmas tree in the National Forest here in Northern Utah, and it's kind of a fun little adventure, but this video is primarily about our top five products that we recommend for overlanding, things you might want to enjoy picking up for Christmas. There are links for all of these products in the description below, so make sure you use those. And without further ado, we'll get right into it. Okay, first on the list is our air compressor. Yeah, this is kind of a, an update from our previous top five list. We did have our air compressor on last year, but that was, of course, our Harbor Freight air compressor, which is still a good compressor, don't get me wrong. We've still had really good luck with that, but this is now our new recommendation because for not a ton more money, you can get this. And this is by far and away the fastest air compressor that I've ever used. And you really ought to check out uh, Jason's video. Uh, his channel name is Oxfoot. Uh, him and I exchange notes from time to time on the YouTube world. And he uh, very kindly compared this air compressor to the dual piston compressor from ARB. You know, the one that costs like six or 700 bucks. And this one was double the speed. And this one only costs like a little over a hundred bucks. The only unfortunate thing is I think you have to go get it at Napa Auto Parts. You know, it's not like, you know, something you could get on Amazon or something like that. But it's still our recommendation for an air compressor. And if you're driving out on forest roads, doing off-roading, this is a requirement in my mind. Another update on last year's video, our power station. Yeah, so last year we had a Jackery 240. That was our recommendation. But this is kind of like the air compressor in that this product is just a little bit more money than what you would spend on our last year's recommendation, but you get a lot more. So, you know, we, we try to recommend products that are, you know, budget oriented. This definitely still falls in that category, but you get a lot more for the money. You get like, you know, way more capacity, a more powerful inverter, and you get the most uh, current uh, lithium iron phosphate battery chemistry and overall it's just a really good product and we've had a, a really good experience with it so far and it's our number two pick wait did we say what brand it is oops our power station comes in handy for our number three item which is the electric blanket it's not any special brand or anything like that it's just a cheapie off amazon but it has saved our butts camping in the cold if you get this particular one, which you can find at the link down below, this one runs off of a 12 volt plug, which means that you can run it off of your OOPS power station. Yeah, and it's awesome because it kind of gives you the ability to extend your camping season a little bit. It's really, you know, way more efficient to have your heat inside a sleeping bag like this than it is to use like a space heater or something like that. So yeah, not a ton of power, uh, but you get a lot of heat and a lot of comfort for it and it's really inexpensive too, so highly recommend. Number four on the list is our gazelle tent. As most of you know, we made the switch this year from a rooftop tent to a ground tent, and we couldn't be happier with the choice that we made. Of course, we did end up deciding to just sleep in the back of the Sequoia, and I think going forward, that's probably what we're gonna try to do as often as we can, but in my opinion, the gazelle tent is still like the best overall option if you want something that's you know, easy to set up and protects you well enough from the weather and it gives you a lot of nice, you know, space and room to spread out. And you can easily just throw it in the back of pretty much any truck or SUV. And I don't think I would recommend it if you want to camp in really cold weather, but outside of that, it's a really good tent and it's not hugely expensive for what it is. I think it's a fair price. And uh, if they have them in stock, which they kind of rarely do because they sell out so quickly, you can find one in the link in the description below. And then our final item on our top five list is going to be a impact wrench. This one specifically that I have has a flashlight on it, <laughs> but it's also from Milwaukee. This is their 12 volt line. Uh, and this is not really like a camping item at all but you know the way i see it if you're doing this type of thing you're going to be doing some work on your rig from time to time and i have not had a tool 
in my entire life as useful as this when it comes to working on the car. This just makes your whole life easier. It's got enough torque to take off lugs and therefore it has plenty of torque to remove all sorts of other things when you're working on the car. And it's just a nice thing to keep with you also because it's small. So if you had to do like a little repair on the trail or something like that, this could make your life way easier. And yeah, as far as like the tools I used this year, uh, I think this one got the most use, honestly, more so than all the other items we showed you. So I figured I, I, I should share it with you. This year we did decide to include a few bonus items, maybe some things that wouldn't necessarily fall within the automotive camping overlanding uh, categories. So we do occasionally get asked about camera equipment. We did make a whole video dedicated to it, but as far as our overall recommendation for photos and primarily video, if that's something that you're interested in doing for yourself and you wanna take your video production to the next level, we totally recommend Panasonic S5. We've got two of them and they are top notch for taking photos, but they also are just really outstanding for video, you know, 4K, 10-bit footage, and uh, honestly, without those features, the production quality of our channel would not be half of what it is. And then also, we don't own one of these, but if you're just looking for a good all-around stills camera, uh, I would probably recommend that you look at the Nikon Z5. It's really uh, kind of cool that they're uh, selling a full-frame mirrorless camera for less than a thousand dollars and it would probably be my recommendation if you're just looking for a good all-around camera to take with you on your travels. Not necessarily a great video camera but everything else that it, it does it does relatively well. And of course what overlanding adventure channel would be complete without some drone footage so uh, our recommendation for that is still going to be the DJI Mini 2. It's small, compact, Lightweight, flies great, records great 4K footage, and it's really inexpensive. So uh, if you want to just keep things simple and have some nice drone footage in your videos, this is a great way to go. If you want to step things up a little bit, I'd probably recommend the DJI Air 2S. It'll step up into uh, allowing you to record in log recording formats and also 10-bit footage. Uh, it would be really good if you want to take your productions uh, to the next level in that regard. Okay, we've got one last recommendation for you, and if I'm honest, I think this is my favorite one of all the things we've suggested. That is our America the Beautiful National Parks Pass. Yeah, the interagency pass is awesome. It's 80 bucks, and of course it allows you to have unlimited access to national parks uh, for the course of a year. And we've also found that it has been valid at some other uh, recreation areas too that are that fall under national forest so you know sometimes it'll allow you to uh, to enjoy those places without paying a daily fee it's really awesome especially because a lot of the big national parks you know that we've been to Grand Teton Yellowstone uh, Zion Arches they've all you know they've all gone up to like a 25 30 dollar daily fee so if you know, if you're gonna go just a few times, you're gonna get your money's worth out of it. I don't know if I'd recommend it to somebody who lives outside of the Western United States. You'd probably just have to take a look and see what kind of national parks you have nearby to, to kind of determine if it's worth it to you. But uh, ours has been given to us two years in a row by my parents. So thank you, mom and dad. We get great use out of it and it's been a great gift and I would recommend it wholly as a gift for other people this Christmas. And that should cover it for all of our recommendations for gear and I guess sort of a gift buying guide for 2021. I hope that you enjoyed this and now I hope that you'll enjoy going back in time with us as we go cut down our Christmas tree. That was a time vortex. Very bad. <laughs>
fun? Yeah. We'll go ice skating. <laughs> Welcome to the National Forest. We are here to cut down a tree. Now, if you're gonna do something like this for yourself, you're gonna need to know a couple of things before you do it. Of course, you're gonna need to bring something to actually cut the tree down with. So we've got uh, this guy here. I've found that these are actually surprisingly effective. Um, and then also I've got a tape measure to help me kind of measure the uh, height of the tree if I need to, to you know, kind of get a better idea of what's gonna fit in our living room. And then also, it's worth noting that uh, if you're going to come out into the forest uh, during this time of year, you're definitely going to need to have probably a vehicle with some capability. So four-wheel drive, as you can see even here just at this like trailhead, there's quite a bit of snow. You don't want to get stuck out here. And then of course you're going to need a permit from the National Forest Service. And it seems like most forest uh, like ranger districts have certain rules to follow when it comes to cutting down trees. So make sure you get your permit, you follow the rules, and have a good time. Let's go find a tree. Thanks for coming along for the ride. Merry Christmas, and we'll see you in the next one.